Alrighty then, corn children, children of the corn. Let's talk about rates of change. Here's a little story. At time zero seconds, a diver jumps up from a diving platform that is 32 feet above the water. His height is given by this here upside down parabola, projectile motion measured with gravity in feet per second squared. All right. So here's our little story. At time zero, here's his height, 32 feet. If we plug one into this, you'll notice negative 16, positive 16 cancel, you get 32. So one second in, he's back to a height of 32. So he jumped up into the air and then he started back down again. One second in, 32. All right, so here's what we wanna kind of look at. We want to ask, what happens? What do we get? What does it mean if I find the slope of this here secant line. Now you might be asking yourself, what the Haiti hose a secant line? Well think back with me real quickly to circles. You remember circles? A secant line was a line that intersected the circle at two points while a tangent line intersected only at one point. You also might recall that if you cut this um, line into a line segment, it became a chord, but it's called a secant line. All right, so intersecting at two points. So I have intersected my curve here at two points. So what on earth does this mean in the context of our little story? Well, I'm glad you asked. I know, it's kind of exciting. So let's recall back to, I don't know, Algebra 1, What's the slope formula? Oh, we know that. Y sub two minus Y sub one over X sub two minus X sub one. Now, if you wanted to, it's not necessary, but if you wanna get super fancy, we could do the same thing, but instead of Y, we could use our H of T function notation. I know, right, right? And because this isn't truly the X axis, it's the T time axis, we can say the following. It's the height at the second point minus the height at the first point over the second time minus the first time. Yeah, I know, it, it's, it's still the slow formula, okay? So don't get too excited. So what if we wanted to find the slope of the secant line from one time one second to 1.5, which is what we have here. What if I want the slope of this? Okay, okay, we can do this. That would be the height at 1.5 minus the height at one over time 1.5 minus time one. All right, and so we math this out. I've already plugged the numbers in. When you put 1.5 into our function, you get 20. So 20 is the y coordinate. 32 is the y-coordinate, and this is, of course, 0.5. Now, we can math that out. It's very straightforward. You get negative 24, but here's my question. Negative 24 what? Well, let's look at this. The y-coordinates, the heights, are being measured in feet. Yeah, feet. So this would be 20 in feet, 32 in feet. So the numerator would be feet. The denominator are our times, and our times are being measured in seconds. So this is both in seconds. So when we get this negative 24, it has the units feet per second. Hmm. Hmm. That, that looks kind of like a velocity. It is. It is is, it is. All right, so here's what I want you to get out of this. When we find the slope of a secant line, what we are getting at, let me write it again. You can take the time too. Um, and I'm gonna do this in general on a time frame. 
is an average rate of change. It's how much we have changed, an average rate of change, from one time to a second time. And if the function that we're looking at is position versus time, it gives a second meaning. This becomes our average velocity. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a velocity. It's a vector. There's a magnitude and that negative is the direction. It's moving downward. I know, I know. Now again, it, the average rate of change is average velocity if we are looking at a change in position over a change in time. You remember the delta is the Greek letter that stands for a little change. Little change in height over a little change in time will give us velocity. And when we are considering a secant line with two points, two times a time interval, we have an average velocity. But coming up really quickly in our next video, we're going to ask the more exciting question, what if I don't want the velocity with two times, what if I want the instantaneous velocity, in other words, the slope of the tangent line. Yeah, stay tuned for that.